About two days ago, I posted this on my Instagram saying that Louisiana House approves marijuana decriminalization bill and they were going to consider to legalize cannabis sales, which is why I think the cannabis industry is something everyone should check out. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that like button since it really helps the channel out. Remember, I have a completely free Discord group chat, which link for that is down in the description below, and that I open a second channel channel in Spanish where I will, I will be posting the same content as here but in Spanish so it will mean the world to me if you go and share that channel and subscribe. So truly reported earnings on Thursday and in my opinion they did excellent. Today we will talk about that, about the harvest acquisition and mountaineer acquisition and my thoughts on everything. To start they posted better than expected quarter one 2021 revenue but apparently the pace of growth has slowed down compared to previous quarters. They had 111% growth in quarter four 2020 and 102% growth in quarter one 2021 but if you ask me I still thing it was incredible and I'm not worried at all. Then they said that during quarter one we continue to execute on growth and Florida as well as our national hub expansions. Our record revenue and industry leading EBITDA margins demonstrates our continued focus on executions. So truly reported record first quarter 2021 revenue of 193.8 million dollars, net income of 30 million dollars and adjusted EBITDA of 90.8 million dollars. With this they achieved the 13th consecutive quarter of profitability and has not only been profitable for 13 consecutive quarters, but that profitability has also increased every single quarter. Even though Seeking Alpha said that they saw a slowdown, they still grew their revenue about 15% quarter over quarter from quarter 4 2020, which I think it is very, very nice. But let's analyze their balance sheet first. First of all, they have total cash and cash equivalents of $162.4 million, up from $146 last quarter. As you can see, their inventory increased to $100. $3 million as well and total current assets of $294.1 million. Something that increased as well in this past quarter is their property and equipment to $365 million which I think it is incredible because that means that they are expanding and growing and that they have been investing in the company as well. They have total assets of $897.4 million which increased from $816 million but what I like the most is that the is that it increased because the company is growing organically and not because of goodwill on intangible assets. As you can see, they saw the most growth from inventory and equipment, while goodwill decreased and even though intangible assets did increase, but it increased only a little bit. Now, on their liabilities, they have a total current liabilities of $100 million, which is not that huge in comparison to the total current assets or even their cash. But we do need to notice that it went up from $75 million in a single quarter. And as you can see, the biggest impact in current liabilities was their actual income tax payable. Talking about tax, let's explain something really quick about tax and the cannabis industry. Years ago, a law passed called Section 280E. I have talked about this before, but I'll say it again to explain why the cannabis industry it has, has this weird taxation. So apparently the law passed to put a stop to taxpayer deductible expenses in relation to sales of some drugs that I can't mention right now. As explained here, the 280E tax code and cannabis, the cannabis business is quickly becoming a multi-billion dollar industry and basically regulations still have yet to yield in its favor. The truth of the matter is that despite its legalization and advantages medical use, throughout the 50 states, Cannabis is still classified as a schedule control substance. What this means is that even with the rapid growth of the cannabis industry, entrepreneurs in the industry are facing financial challenges tax-wise, mainly because taxes for this industry is four times higher than other conventional businesses. Then they have total liabilities of $411 million. I do have to say that as always, I like their balance sheet a lot. It has current ratio of almost three, which is incredible and their assets are growing because the company is growing. I already talked about the revenue, which increased over 100% year over year. Something that I like, again, is their cost of goods sold. 
which leaves them with a gross profit margin of over 69%, an income from operation of $72 million, which the margin has decreased in comparison to last year, but we need to take into consideration that their expenses have increased as well as their revenue increase. Because the company is investing a lot of money into their own company to continue growing as they have been doing for so long, and I don't think that is bad. Ended the quarter with net profits of $30 million, which is something that, that has impressed me. This is a growth company in the cannabis industry that is profitable and that is going to accelerate even more after their harvest acquisition and we are going to see why. Then we saw that their inventory increased and was mainly because of this. Can cannabis plants and harvested cannabis and packages both increased nicely. Then, then finished goods on medicated and medicated as well. Obviously, they saw higher growth for medicated as they are le the leaders in Florida and Florida has not legalized rec recreational use yet. But they did mention that medical MJ patients in Florida are surging again. On their earnings call, they mentioned that patients onboarding into the program were approximately 4,800 per week during quarter one. More recently, over the last month, that patient growth has increased to approximately 6 thousand per week with 7,000 patients added the week of 420, which is incredibly high from 4,800 4, in quarter one to 6,000 per week lately. And in 2020, they ended with about 2,000 per week. So this is actually a huge acceleration in growth as well. Now let's talk about their acquisitions. First of all, Trulip completes acquisition of Mountaineer Holding LLC in West Virginia, which is nice to expand a little bit more to the north is this of the country. As previously announced that Mountaineer acquisition positioned TrueLive for vertical operations in West Virginia, the Mountaineer business consists of a cultivation permit and two dispensaries permits in West Virginia. But the biggest transaction for TrueLive right now is its possible harvest acquisition. It still needs to be approved by regulators, but if completed, it would easily create one of the largest cannabis companies in the US and would be the largest US cannabis transaction as well. So if this were to get approved, they would be the largest retail and cultivation footprint across the US with a combined 2021 consensus revenue of $1.2 billion. Trulip would be the most profitable US MSO with adjusted EBITDA of $461 million. They would now have footprint in 11 states in three renal hubs. Since Trulip is already in six states and harvest in nine, but together they would be in 11. Then they would have a total of 126 dispensaries, 3.1 million square foot of, act of active cultivation and production, will have 22 cultivation and production facilities and more. For as I said before, they would be the second cannabis company revenue wise, but would be the most profitable in the world. In this map, you can see where they will be now. I like that they are in the southwest, southeast, and northeast of the country. Something I also liked about this acquisition is that Har Harvest is based in Arizona, focusing on the west coast, and that Arizona just legalized MJ some months ago. Harvest is the market leader there with 15 open locations, licenses for four or more locations, five cultivation and processing sites, recreational sales drove average revenue increase of 100% per store during February, and many, many more things that I think will be incredible for truly growth acceleration. So I started investing in this company not so long ago as I spent a lot of time figuring out which was the best cannabis company for me to invest on within the industry as there are many but I always thought that I wanted to invest in this industry as I see a huge potential. I started investing when the, I saw the stock was finally dropping. I started in April when the stock was about $43.68 per share and has been averaging down while it continues dropping. The lowest point I has investing on has been $37.76 per share and the highest one has been $43.68 per share. I invested only about $500 in this company and now that the stock is consolidating, I'm waiting to see what happens if it drops even more to buy at better prices and increase my position or what happens next. Now, what are my thoughts on all this? 
First of all, I think the company did excellent. They had very nice growth, continue with the, gro with the growth of over 100% year over year. They are expanding massively and growing organically. With this possible acquisition, I do see even more potential in the long term, which is why I'm investing in it right now. I do believe the whole industry has potential as more and more states continue legalizing MJ and sooner or later it will be federally legalized just like in Canada and that is why I'm investing in the US in companies in the US. That is why I have been saying that everyone should read more and do research on the industry. I'm not a financial advisor and you should do your due diligence before investing in anything but well, analysts are expecting the stock to go on average up to $69.52 per share, as low as $55 or as high as $108.45 per share. Do not invest only because analysts say this because they could be wrong just like I could be wrong, but it's a reference point of view. Now, are you invested in the MJ industry? If so, in which company? If not, are you looking to invest in it? Let me know in the comment section below. Consider subscribing and smashing that like button since it really helps the channel out. Thank you and see you next time.